Two weeks ago I finished a remake of Silent Hill 2. The game was fantastic, but something still bothers me. The amount of stuttering and ghosting I experienced was insane. It didn't really affect my gameplay or anything else, but visually it sucked. But Silent Hill 2 isn't the only game that suffers from it. Many games these days try to, how I like to call it, over-optimize their game, enhancing the graphics at a point where a thousand dollar graphics card struggles to go over 60 FPS. Why do modern games nowadays run barely at 60 FPS on the fattest, most expensive GPU ever? But let me tell you first why Silent Hill 2 is stuck as such a great game with such a bad performance. First of all, I could even open Silent Hill again to record the upcoming parts. It would just crash the whole time. I had to search for fixes, but after many tries to open it, I finally got it in the game. But even worse, the game would, for some reason, switch to the audio coming from my monitor, even though my headset was connected. Once I load in the game, I was stunned by the graphics, knowing it went from this to this. But once I entered the toilet, which probably everyone did, the major lag happened. For some reason, entering this bathroom drops your FPS by like 10 or something. At that point, I thought, huh, it's probably because of a program running in the background or the quality settings. But once I closed all 657 tabs and lowered the graphics to medium, this weird ghosting happens around James' body. You know something is wrong if you spent your first 5 minutes in the graphic settings. Once I tweaked every setting, I went back into glazing the game, playing with the mod and be like, wow, that is just like real life, and looking at every tree like I have never seen one ever before. But the start continued. I set it to the lowest setting possible and it went flawless for a minute but then it came back. I thought no way this is normal. I didn't even reach the bottom of the staircase, I looked already for a solution on YouTube to fix that. But here's where I saw that a lot of people had the exact same problem. After trying to fix everything, the stuttering was still there. I had enough and tried my own experiment. I played for a while on the lowest quality setting with the DLSS set to ultra performance, which no one does ever. Changing the DLSS setting can either improve the graphics of the game or decrease it but enhance the performance for that. After doing that, the game read perfectly. <laughs> Just kidding, the game was still stuttering. Now here's the experiment. What would happen if I played this game at the max settings? Would my PC explode or will it magically fix the problem? The graphics looked way better and the stuttering stopped magically, but it went from 60 FPS to like 30 FPS. And to be honest, I'd rather play with a little stuttering than 30 FPS. My PC wasn't even breathing hard, it was pretty much light work for me. But the game couldn't handle itself, I guess. At first I was done with it and thought about getting a refund, but I really wanted to play this game and so I did a whole playthrough. But like I said, Silent Hill 2 is not the only game that suffers from it. Many many modern games these days suffer from the same problem. What is wrong with these games nowadays? Some perform pretty well with stunning graphics, but some perform like absolutely dark crap. One reason out of many I will talk about in this video is upscaling. Upscaling technology is possible thanks to AI, but this comes with its cost. You can change DLSS settings to either balance quality or performance, which for example, upscales with AI the quality of the game if you enable quality. And logically, for performance, it will downscale, which by the way, looks horrible. I get it, it's for players who have a potato PC, but DLSS can only be activated by RTX cards, which arguably can run most games on high settings and don't have to overthink if their RTX can run the game or not. So naturally the game runs pretty bad on its own, but performs better with DLSS on. Upscaling technology is just a quick and easy solution for developers to be lazy because instead of fixing their actual game, they can just publish it and let DLSS take care of the rest. Another quick fix is frame generation. It's a technique where extra frames are created by AI or algorithms to make gameplay look smoother, even if the game is running at a super high frame rate. I will break this down to make it even more simpler. A game generates frames or images at a certain speed, like 60 frames per second. This determines how smooth the gameplay will feel. 120 FPS gameplay is much smoother but harder on a GPU. And what frame generation does is instead of your GPU rendering every single frame, AI steps in and creates extra frames between the real ones. Now you know what it does, but how does it work? The AI looks at the previous and next frames, analyzes how objects are moving and predicts what the in-between frames should look like. It will feel smoother and doesn't need as much power from your GPU, however, AI generated frames or images don't look always how you describe them, especially if the AI has to guess it. Which means there will be weird blurs or distortions in some situations. On top of all that, it will add some latency in some cases, which can be a problem for some players. I think upscaling is a great thing to not do a down payment for a new graphics card, or sell a hard to play GTA 6. This gives developers the opportunity to be lazy and not optimize their game. And let's be honest, these AAA games are already made by what I call laid back developers. Ah, uh, laid back developers. Spend 80 bucks on a game that uses the same assets like the last game and AI art. Yeah, I still don't understand why people buy Call of Duty. 
developers think or maybe they hope that we players will have DLSS automatically on, which can be a great feature but isn't a replacement for optimization. People criticize Unreal Engine 5 for that and it might be that, but the issue is not the tool, it's the people using it. I love that technology is going forward. Okay, maybe even a bit too fast. Designed specifically for companionship and intimacy. But people take every tool and every excuse to sell an unoptimized game. Years ago I bought a PC with an RTX 2060 and it managed to run GTA 5 with a bunch of mods on it. And now I have to put every bandage on a game with my RTX 4060. But why are they all doing this? The simple answer would be money. They mostly fire the staff that know how to optimize a game and know how to make a good game and replace them, maybe with cheaper staff. It's way easier to switch to Unreal Engine 5 and let AI do the trick instead of train new people or hire experienced developers. It seems like that every major gaming franchise fires staff or uses cheap tricks to save money. On screen right now you will see the recommended specs for Silent Hill 2. They even suggest to turn DLSS on to play at the recommended settings. Silent Hill 2's fog wasn't just to make the game look creepy even though it succeed with that. It was also there to enhance the performance in the first Silent Hill games. A mod came out that removed the fog and showed how even though things are far away it will still render in. But just because Silent Hill 2 was unoptimized doesn't mean it was a bad game. I don't know if this is a controversial statement but 4K graphics doesn't matter. I know it's crazy Ubisoft but it's just my opinion. Sometimes when I see these ultra realistic trailers I feel like the devs think that we will look at the screen and be like like, oh look, so shiny, like a caveman finding diamonds. Till now, I love playing PlayStation 2 games. I love playing little indie games like Norland and others that don't brag about being high in graphics and will blow your mind or your PC. It's easier now for small developers to make a high quality looking game, but it made it easier for the big dogs to publish an unoptimized game. Let's talk about the next topic. Ray tracing. Ray tracing is a way of making the video game's lighting and reflection look more realistic. It's nothing new. Ray tracing was always there and to put it simple, it acts how light would work in the real world. Before that, developers had to be creative and use their own technique and tools to simulate this photorealistic look. To be fair, I've never used ray tracing and if it was on, I immediately turn it off. In modern games, you won't even notice a big difference, uh, but your GPU will. Ray tracing was not only used in games, but also in films that still look incredibly well made to this day. If you have the power to run it, that's awesome and you don't have to have it enabled, but this leaves AAA devs the option to be even more lazy. Like said before, developers had to actually find unique ways to make the lighting and reflections super realistic. With ray tracing, this will not completely destroy it, but it will, like the upscaling technology, make devs more lazy. I love that every game doesn't look like Harry Potter, The Secret of Chambers, but how much more will AI or other technology enhancement take the place of effective developer work? And how many times more do I have to upgrade my graphics card to finally play a game on high resolution? <clears throat> Sorry for that. Let's look at a game like Stalker 2, which is a great game. The mods look amazing and the dynamic day and night cycle really enhanced the experience for me. The dynamic lighting really adds to the realism, which is impressive for a kind of small studio. And I would even argue that this would be really tough to achieve without Unreal Engine 5. But because it has the same unoptimized settings, it leaves the game with a weird blur and ghosting. All of these graphical issues are so minor that are easily forgotten, the performance really goes downhill. Especially in a game like Stalker 2, where high FPS is is a must to react quickly against AI. Nowadays I don't watch normal reviews, I watch a ton of performance reviews, especially for Stark 2, where they tested different graphic cards. And when I saw that you would need an RTX 4070 to barely break over 60 FPS at 180p without the LSS is crazy. So now we know a little bit about the problem, right? But let's talk about anti-ally, ally, ally. Let's talk about anti-aliasing. Back when I played Red Dead 2, I always wondered why the game looks so good but kind of blurry. When I played it, I didn't know anything about the graphic settings and thought maybe time has come to get a set of glasses. It was years later when I got interested to dive deeper into graphic settings and specs that anti-aliasing or TAA makes the game blurry. Well, why would I do that? TAA smooth out jagged edges that appear on curved or diagonal lines. These hard edges happen because pixels are squares and can't perfectly form smooth curves or lines. It makes objects or even the surrounding feel more real. You can notice a huge difference with and without it on. Which seems like that the devs did optimize the game for players that might not want to play with TAA on. At first it might seem like it's Unreal Engine 5's fault. And to be honest, every time I open up a new game and I see it's made with Unreal Engine 5, sweat runs down my forehead while looking at my PC. But if the devs would take the time to optimize the game with the tools they have for players, it wouldn't be such a huge problem. Players wouldn't need to be an organ trafficker to buy the newest GPU. 
But what if that is exactly what they want for you? No, they don't want you to be an organ trafficker. But what if they want you to buy a new GPU every two years because your current one overheats and explodes the moment you try to run a modern game on medium settings? I call this segment theory with your boy. <laughs> Imagine making a game so irresistible that everyone wants to play it, no matter the cost. But oh no, the shiny new RTX which most player uses can't handle it. Thousands of players need an upgrade or will never be able to play it. Lucky for you though, you've already bought shares in Nvidia and AMD. So all those upgrades just make you even richer. But that's just a theory. Don't be an organ trafficker, please. It's pretty common nowadays for games requiring in DLSS or any other upscale method to make them run over 60 FPS. I have another theory why they might do it or why some modern games feel bad nowadays. Expectations. If you expect less and less over the years from a franchise, they won't need to put as much money or effort to create a game and can sell every year a new game. Rockstar Game is a perfect example. Everyone has high expectations for GTA 6 or the new Red Dead Redemption, which leaves the developers no room for mistakes. Other AAA games fear that and don't want to spend as much money, so each year they decrease the quality so the expectations of player drop and they can make a huge profit. Speaking of GTA 6, what makes me think the most lately is how will the PS5 handle GTA 6. How will our PCs handle that game? I have a feeling that the game will come out with some issues but not as bad as Cyberpunk. I am really interested what you guys think. Is it Unreal Engine 5's fault or the developers? And how can they prevent that in the future? With that, I will leave you with a little poem. The devs made a game, but it runs like a snail. AI slapped on top to try and prevail. Optimization? They laugh. Who needs that old law? Now our GPUs cry, and our wallets feel sore. Unreal 5 saves the day for the devs who are lazy. Their unoptimized game leaves the players half crazy. With ghosting and blur, our hopes take a fall. But hey, those reflections, they're worth it all.